Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for all that you have given to us, all that you have blessed us with, all that you have entrusted us with. Thank you for picking us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for making ways for us. Thank you for forgiving us and loving us and leading us and guiding us. Thank you for grace in us. We love you, Father, and we welcome you to our day. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Hello, and welcome back to Gracefield. <laughs> I am so excited that you decided to join me today for another video. So it's Sabbath prep time. Six days we work and we were so blessed that we get one day to just rest, to rest our minds, our bodies, our souls, our spirits, and what a beautiful time it is. So I thought that I would bring you guys along with me on this day as I just began getting myself ready for the day. I figured that we could chit chat and I could share something um, with you that's on my heart. So to start off with, just in case you're new, as soon as I get out of the bed, I take the sheets off of my bed. The kids take the sheets off of their beds and I just start that load immediately so that I can just get it right into the dryer and we can get it back on our beds and we can be ready. So I just kind of shared with you um, what their laundry room was looking like. The clothes were waiting for me. Um, and this particular morning, I'm kind of doing like a good ready with me. Like I'm showing you everything. Everything I have to do, everything I need to do. Um, so I went ahead and showered and got ready for the day. Normally, I just throw something on my brows and lipstick my jewelry and my perfume but for this day I did it all so that you could see me <laughs> and what the process looks like when I'm in like a full face if you want to call it that it literally takes me maybe five minutes at the most to do a full face and for just um, one or two things I'm literally in and out of that bathroom in probably 10 minutes getting everything done and I'm ready for the day so I typically um, have been wearing scarves on my head and I absolutely love them. But what I was noticing that I was starting to get headaches. And so I have just taken a break from wearing scarves, as I'm sure a lot of you have noticed. And I have been wearing this black um, bands or black headbands um, just so to see, you know, if the headache would stop. Um, I've never been one to get headaches. So that was something that I wanted to pay attention to. And then I just went ahead and started with my bathrooms. I cleaned my bathroom. I cleaned my um, kids' bathroom. And I didn't leave all the footage in there. Um, but once everything was done, <laughs> I finally was able to eat and after I ate, I was able to just take out my planner and nothing special or grand, but I was just able to write down what my plans were for the day. I already had an idea, but I just wanted to get it from my head onto the paper so that I could check off the list and seeing them could help me put them into the order of priority. And then I went ahead and made some tea and enjoyed a cup of tea. That's where I'm going to stop with my talking of the actual Sabbath prep day itself. Because if you've been following me, then you already know how I do things here. If you were new, I just wanted to make sure um, that you weren't lost. And I just wanted to um, make sure you understood what I'm doing. Because I'm not going to be cooking and working on Saturday. I am preparing everything ahead of time. So that means I want to have a clean house. I want to have my meals already ready so that on Saturday I can just rest and enjoy my family family and enjoy my fellowship and my personal time um, with the Lord so I can just meet with him and and hear what he has to say and you know just rest right like there's so much going on in a week so many people need your attention there's so many things to do 
there's so many things you have to do, so many things you want to do. There's just a lot. And we can be so busy being so busy that we just don't take time to listen to our bodies, to stop, to drink water, to even sleep like we should. So I'm really thankful for this time when I get to slow down and I get to just rest and just be and just love and just be filled and refueled and energized so that I have what I need first and foremost for me to make it the next week, but then that I have extra for my spouse and for my children and those close to me and an extra special dose for the phenomenal ladies of grace because <laughs> you guys are the best and I want to make sure that I'm getting enough rest so I can give you guys fresh stuff and so that I can just share with you the things that are on my heart and I can just continue to walk this thing called life with you. Now, you know, I always want to give you something that you can sink your teeth in, something that's going to strengthen you, stretch you, encourage you, motivate you, and inspire you for every area of your life, because I feel that is so important. And although I've talked about this before, I've got to talk about it again, because that's what's on my heart. We can seek a lot of things. We can want a lot of things. But I think the most important thing is to want and to seek his presence. But the thing is, his presence comes at a cost. And so the question then is, what are you willing to lay down? What are you willing to give up? And or what are you willing to walk away from? Wow. (laughs) That's a whole mouthful. Like, What are you willing to lay down? What are you willing to give up? What and who are you willing to walk away from for his glory? Something I've been saying lately, and I again, I just got to flow with it. I say, you know, it's easy for us to say yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. I'll obey. I'll be obedient. I walk in obedience, I walk in purpose, in destiny. We say all these cliche, churchy things that sound good that uh, we've heard other people say. But see, he's not listening to what you say. He knows the heart of man, right? It's the life you live. See, I can say, Lord, I give you all of me. Have your way in me. And then... Lay down your vices. Or he tells me, give up your career. What about when he tells me, walk away from the person you love? What if he tells me, walk away from the addiction? Walk away from this, walk away from that. Give up pornography. Give up fornication. Give up adultery, right? Give up being a glutton. Give up being a drunk. Lay down that resentment. Lay down that animosity. Lay down that aggression. Lay down that attitude. Lay down that foul mouth that wants to speak all kind of profane things. Because praises and profane things shouldn't be coming out the same mouth. Right? So, it's easy to say... Yes, Lord, here I am. Pick me, use me, choose me until he tells you to do that thing that you don't want to do. Until he tells you give him that thing that you don't want to give him. And until he tells you what you don't want to hear. Because although not everybody would agree with me, he doesn't always tell us what we want to hear. Have there been some times when you wanted to hear something, but that's not what he told you? Where you wanted something to happen, when you wanted something to go a certain way, and it didn't happen that way? He didn't answer you when you wanted him to? He didn't come through the way that you thought that he would? Have there been times like that for you in your life? Because it has for me. And in those times, are you still going to love him? Are you still going to serve him? Do you still want his presence? Or is the cost too great? 
So we only want his presence when it's all roses and lollipops and candy and, and it's fantasizing and romanticizing. Is that the only time we want him? Is that the only time we want his presence? Do we just want him to be like a sugar daddy or a pimp or something or a genie in a bottle where we can say, oh, daddy, I want this. Daddy, I want that. Oh, can I have? Can I have? Can I have? Can I have? And I'm not saying that we shouldn't ask him for things. But are you asking him for things and you didn't even tell him good morning? Are you asking him for things and you didn't even ask him what his will was for you for the day? Are you asking him for things and you haven't even worshipped him? We were created to worship him. How dare you ask him for something and you haven't even taken the time to acknowledge him? Where's the relationship in that? It's like your son just coming saying, Ma, Dad, can I get your, oh, just mom dad where are your keys at excuse me what about good morning mom how are you doing today i love you that was a good breakfast you look nice say something come on like some manners here we teach our children manners and if we want our children to obey us and be so respectful to us the audacity to think that we do not need to respect and acknowledge and reverence a king of kings? What? Our heavenly father? No, we've got it messed up. We've got it twisted and we've got to get it back on. We got to get it back together. Listen, father, put me back on that wheel. <laughs> Y'all know I said every week because I can't help myself because that's, that's it. Like, Lord, put me back on the wheel. Like, make me over again. Like, cleanse me. Wash me right? Take this filth away, right? Like refiner's fire, like scrape up these impurities in my life so I can come forth as pure gold. Because I don't want to be thinking that I'm doing all these things and really I'm stinking before the Lord. And he says, depart from me. I never even knew you. And he's like, wait, but Lord, didn't I do all these things in your name? I have to go to the story of my mixer. If you're new here, for 16 years, I've been wanting a KitchenAid. And I just couldn't get it because there was something else that I wanted or needed more or there was not the finances for it. Or again, this was more of a want versus a need. And so it just kept getting on the back burner. And so I just got it and using it and loving it. But I had to wait for it. It didn't come when I wanted it. It didn't come how I think thought that it would um, when I wanted. I had to wait for it. I really had to wait for it and I had to be patient while I waited. And that's what I kind of want to talk to you about. Like you want his presence, but are you willing to wait for it? See, when we talk about his presence comes at a cost, it's not always a financial cost, right? Like we can think that that cost and sacrifice is just a financial thing, but that's not it at all. If you think that's what it is, that's just one small piece and you're missing a bigger picture. It's not your finances he wants. He wants your life, right? Like to give my life as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. That's what he's looking for. Like he's looking for a heart that's poured out, right? That serving him, saying, Father, if I like it, yes to your will and your way. And Father, if I don't like it, yes to your will and your way. Are you willing to wait patiently for his presence, even if it hasn't come yet? Even if it hasn't happened the way you thought? Even if you fill in the blanks, are you still willing to wait are you willing to pay the cost? I know some people are like, oh, Christy, you're going so far, but let's go there, right? Like, let's stretch this thing, baby. Like, come on, let's do this for the kingdom. Let's do this for our families. Let's do this for the next generation. Like, we're trying to leave a legacy behind, like a legacy of faith. Like, we're trying to change our, our generation. We're trying to change a nation. Like, we're trying to change our bloodline. We don't want to keep doing things the same because we already see the results of that. So we're here for something new, something fresh. But we can't do any of that if we're not willing to pay the cost for his presence. 
if we're not willing to lay down things, if we're not willing to give up things, if we're not able to walk away from people, and if we're not able to walk away from things. I really want to encourage and speak life to some of you who have just been hit so hard and just knocked down so many times. Like some of you who are just like, Lord, like, why was I even born? Like, what's going on? What's happening? Why me? Why am I so different? Why am I so odd? Why don't I fit in? Why are things not going right for me? Why are things not going right in my life? Like Sally Jo Jane, like she has all the things so well loved, celebrated, appreciated. She has all the things. Billy Mae Bob, (laughs) I don't know like these names, but like has all the things, all the things that would be a good indicator of a good future, of being set up according to this world system, according to beliefs, according to thoughts, according to statistics, according to specialists. But what about me? I don't look like them. I don't sound like them. I come from the wrong side of the tracks. I don't have what they have financially. There's a lot of things that's different. What about me? How come it feels like you forgot about me? How come it feels like you've left me out? How come it feels like I've been just waiting? And when am I going to have my turn? Because I've been serving. And I've been worshiping. And I have lived a life poured out. Anything you've told me to do, I did it. Shaking in my bootstraps, I still trusted you and I did it. I did it in season. I did it out season. I did it when others were with me. I did it when I was walking solo. I did it because I wanted your glory and I wanted your presence. But it seems like you've forgotten about me. It seems like I've been waiting a long time. It's you I want to encourage on today. That serving the Lord will pay off and a delay is not a denial i don't care if it's been 16 years i don't care if it's been more i don't care if it's been a month i'm telling you serving the lord will pay off and it doesn't matter what things look like i'm telling you a suddenly can come into your life and suddenly things change and suddenly your life's not the same in an instant He can turn your life around. He can give you a vision, an insight, wisdom, knowledge, a revelation. Instantly, you can come from not enough to multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire. Do you hear me? Instantly, you can go from being hungry and being about homeless to being debt-free And to having a nice house and car paid for. When I tell you there is no limit to him. The limit is us. The limit is the fact that we don't even have faith enough to believe. That he can do exceedingly abundantly above. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, think, hope for, imagine. Anything you think, that means you're thinking too small. Anything you think, it means you didn't even think high enough. You didn't. I want to share a story with you. I shared it with a friend of mine recently. (laughs) And it touched me. It really touched me and just blessed my heart so much. It's just one of my favorite stories. And every time I hear it, I just get so excited. (laughs) So I want to share this story with you. And, And I might get it wrong. But hear the heart of what I'm saying, okay? So there was this lady and she went to the restaurant because it looked good. She was hungry. And so she noticed that a few people that had come in after her were already getting their plates and they were eating. And of course she's there because she's hungry. You wouldn't go to a restaurant if you're not hungry, right? So 
she notices people are even getting up and she's still sitting here. Now let's just stop right there for a minute. How do you think she felt sitting here waiting and seeing all these people? <laughs> I gotta tell myself, seeing all these people come in after her and leave before her. Cause let me tell you something. <laughs> I'd be like, um, excuse me, sir. Why don't I have my plate yet? I, I would definitely call this server. Over. Excuse me. Um, can I speak to the manager? <laughs> um, sir, I've been sitting here for a while and I've noticed that other people have gotten their plates and I have not got my plate. And I was here before they have come and even some people have left and I'm still sitting here and I just want to make sure everything's okay right like that's what we're saying like i want to make sure everything's okay i want to make sure everything is all right i want to make sure you haven't forgot about me and that's what we're saying to the most high a high god sometimes god have you forgot about me i've been waiting i've been serving i've been doing what i was supposed to do have you forgotten about me I could imagine the person at this point is pretty frustrated, depending on that temper, pretty hot, right? Possibly ready to walk out and leave and just say, forget all about it. But, you know, something happens that's really amazing. And the head chef, or maybe it was the owner, I don't know. It could be either. <laughs> Comes out and says, hey, I remembered you. And I wanted to give you the best. I know you had to wait a little bit longer, but I had the best in mind for you. I had something special for you. I had something for only you. Now, how do you think the person felt? Do you think the person felt like it was worth the wait at that point? Of course, the person felt like it was worth the wait. To know that you were given extra to know that you had special accommodations, to know that you were remembered and that the delay was not a denial. The delay was because something good was about to happen to your life. Something good was about to happen for you. A blessing was about to come to you. A miracle was on the way to your house, to your life. And... If you had have popped off, used foul language, behaved inappropriately, walked out of the restaurant, if you hadn't been in alignment, you would have missed what was there for you. So it is really important that in this season, we are watching what we say. We're watching how we act that we're watching how we treat people, how we respond to people, that we're not being caught up in mischief, that we're keeping our mouths closed, especially toward the men and women of faith. I'd be cautious of how I put my mouth on the anointed and we don't have to understand it. It's just simple. Treat others the way you want to be treated. And if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Because in this season when the Lord is about to move and bless, you don't want to have missed out and been out of position because you couldn't control your temper, because you couldn't control your mouth, because you couldn't control your attitude, because you couldn't control yourself. Because you don't have discipline and self-control, you forfeit and miss the blessings that you have been waiting and praying for and believing for. And you missed it just a moment before. We don't want to miss him in this season. We want to stay in his presence. Yes, it comes at a cost, but the cost is worth it. The cost will always be worth it. It will always cost you something. There is nothing precious and rare and valuable that costs nothing. There is nothing. We're not going to the Dollar Tree to get something and say this is precious and rare and this is heavy and, and worthy. No, we're not doing that. 
You're not going to go propose with a ring from the Dollar Tree. Why? Because it didn't come at a cost. And that's just it. Sometimes we're not willing to pay enough. But when you really want the presence of the Most High God, when you really want his anointing, when you really want to walk worthy, when you really want to have a changed, renewed life, when you really want a closer walk with him, I'm not talking about two hymns and a song. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about presence. I'm talking about a relationship between you and the Most High. I'm not talking about a building. It's our hearts that he's after. It's our hearts that he's looking at. It's our hearts that he's searching. Can he say, oh, trust my daughter. Like, try my daughter. Like, you know, try Job. Can he say, trust you? Or does he know you're going to tell somebody off? Can he say, trust you? Or did he know you're going to throw hands and fight? Can he say trust you when he knows you're going to walk out the restaurant? Can he trust you? Will you say yes despite the cost? Will you say yes when you have to lose it all? Because that very well may happen. Because people like you when you're doing what they do. And people like you when you're doing what they want you to do for them. And people like you when you're doing what they want you to do for yourself. But the moment that you go against the grain, the moment you say, oh, it's my Sabbath. The moment you say, oh, it's my family time. The moment you say, you know what? I'm not drinking anymore. I'm not smoking anymore. I'm not clubbing anymore. I'm not kicking it with you anymore. Are they still going to love you? Or you start to lose some people. When you go from being popular to not so popular. When you go from being overbooked to solo. Just some things I wanted to share with you. I just wanted to share what was on my heart. In case it encouraged, motivated, and inspired you to just be better. To do your best. So um, I just want to tell Angel from Habits of a Homemaker Thank you, Angel, for inspiring this meal. Typically on Sabbath, we do have a bigger meal, but I was so exhausted from the day and from all the work that dinner was a simple enchilada. I did make some corn salsa and add some extra sides to make it more filling. And for the next day, I went ahead and prepared tuna. I don't eat tuna. I had something else for myself, but the children had um, tuna sandwiches. And I want you to see, even in that, the flexibility. I typically make a big meal, but I was tired. I graced myself. And instead of making a big meal, I made the simplest things that I could make. But when I tell you everybody loved it, they loved it. And I love you. And that's why I'm here sharing these things and sharing my heart. Because I want you to know he sees you. Even in your waiting, he sees you. And I wanted to share that story so you know that if you're that person who's been waiting and waiting and waiting, if you're that person who's just had all types of things happen to you, I want to let you know, baby, it was not a mistake. You're not a mistake. You are here for purpose and you were on the mind of Christ and he has something great for you. And the things that you have went through Oh, I feel his presence. He wants to use it for his glory. Your story will take you far. Your story will take you where money can't even get you. Do you hear me? Your story will put you before great men. I'm telling you, I don't care what it looks like. This is a faith walk. It's not a sight walk. If you don't know my story, I am living proof. He will bless you. He will honor you. And I don't care how long it takes before he does it. He will do it if you just trust him, if you just believe, and if you just have faith. Please don't give up right before the server comes with your gourmet meal made by the head chef. Something fabulous and grand. Please don't give up before Yeshua HaMashiach blesses you. 
with blessings you don't even have room enough to receive. Don't give up so soon, so quick. Hold on and be strong because your blessing's on the way. And it may not have come the way you want it, when you want it, how you want it, but it's coming. Prepare yourself to receive it. And let go of what's holding you back. Let go of what's standing in the way. And release so that your hands are open so that you can get what he wants to give to you. Okay? That's what I want to share with you today. He sees you. You are seen and you are loved with an everlasting love. Now, Father, bless the people that hear this message, Father, the people that hear, the people who've come to prepare for the Sabbath, the people who are ready to prepare their hearts and their minds and their souls and spirit. May you meet them on this weekend. May you give them an encounter. May you give them a fresh revelation. May you refill them afresh, Father, with your precious Rahul HaKadosh, your precious Holy Spirit, Father God. You can do all all things help us just to believe father we honor you we glorify you we magnify you we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise and it's in yeshua hamashiach's name we pray jesus christ amen i am out of time never out of words but i will be back again i have a whole sabbath prep playlist and there's so much more where this came from. Stay close, but just keep believing and keep trusting him.